Stayallday.com. You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That's the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is what to do when life hits you in the face. And it will be a time when life hits you in the face. What are you going to do in those situations? Before I get into it, first of all, let me tell everybody, I have a daily motivation text message that I send for free. A message guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point for free, straight to your phone every single day. All you gotta do to receive it is text me at my number, which is 305-384-6894. And every day when I send out that text, you'll be receiving it straight to your phone, free of charge. That number is down below, again, in the show notes. And once you get into my texting community, you can actually respond to any one of those texts and I will text you back. That is not outsourced to a bot or to my team. I actually handle those texts. So you want to text with me? That's the way to do it. Numbers down below in the description. Now, what do you do when life hits you in the face? This is something that I thought about when I heard uh, my favorite author, Robert Greene, give an interview. And he's talked about this in one of his books. So I think he mentioned it in an interview and he talks about uh, Marcus Aurelius, who was a I believe from he was either Rome or Greece, I don't remember which one. But Marcus Aurelius gave the he used the analogy, or Robert Greene used the analogy, he got it from Aurelius that when you're in a combat sport, for example, like Jiu Jitsu or uh MMA or boxing, and the opponent hits you in the face, you get punched in the face in a boxing match. You don't scream bloody murder against the other boxer. You don't try to get them arrested, you don't uh say that they did anything wrong. Like you understand that and when you're in a combat sport, getting hit in the face is part of the game. That's part of what you're you're signing up for the possibility of getting hit in the face when you get into the game. And I'm sharing that for you to understand the the thesis of today's episode is that life works the exact same way. When you sign up for life by being born, then you are signing up for the fact that you might get hit in the face every once in a while. All right, that's the way that life works. And what we're going to talk about is what happens when you get hit in the face by life because it will happen to all of us and it'll happen many times over all of you have been hit in the face at one time or another by life what do you do in that situation as opposed to maybe what you have been doing or what you know might have done in the past let's get into that point number one topic once again is what to do when life hits you in the face number one when life hits you in the face the first thing you need to do is and again, we're talking metaphorically here. First thing you would do in, in real life if somebody hits you in the face is uh, probably protect yourself so you don't take a second hit and then figure out how you're going to hit them back. But when life hits you in the face, metaphorically, first thing you need to do is understand why you got hit in the face and what was your role in allowing it to happen. See, one of the things that we do here at Work On Your Game is we practice extreme ownership. That's why if you listen to the previous four episodes of this show where I talked about the work on your game commandments, one of them is taking full ownership. It was actually the first one that I gave was taking full ownership of everything that occurs in your life. When something happens, you need to understand why it happened and what was your role in this situation becoming this situation. If you're 30 years old, listen to me right now and some situation in your life has hit you in the face. You're dealing with this right now today and you might be you may be getting a little bit defensive right now because some situation occurred and you don't believe it's your fault you don't believe you are at fault for the situation being what it is so hearing me say ask yourself what role you played in allowing the situation to happen is kind of making you a little bit defensive like wait a minute Dre, i didn't do anything to cause this situation this person did this and this happened and that happened and these things i don't control here's the thing that i want you to understand the confluence confluence of events that led up to you today at 30 years old being, exact, being in the exact space that you're in for this thing to happen is 100% on you. You lived the last 30 years of your life to end up in the space that you're in today for that thing to happen. Now, if you think that's just random dumb luck, okay, well, who's the one who lived out all the last 30 years to end up in the exact spot that you were in today for life to hit you in the face? You did. You're responsible for that. The concept of extreme ownership is not about beating yourself up and feeling bad about yourself because 
certain circumstances happen because again look around every human being you see has been hit in the face before by life some of them are getting hit in the face right now you just don't know about it and anybody who's not getting hit in the face is soon they will be hit in the face everybody gets hit in the face by life so don't feel bad about yourself because you got hit in the face because everybody gets it okay so this is an equal life hitting people in the face is an equal opportunity service what you need to do is take ownership of the situation and the fact that it happened so that you can do something about it. Because if you don't take ownership, you don't have responsibility. And with no responsibility, you have no power. And when you have no power, you become a victim of life. And when you're a victim, life will just hit you in the face whenever it feels like it. And there's nothing you can do about it because you don't want to take responsibility. Therefore, you have no power. See, so you got to decide which one do you want? Do you want to take ownership of the situation or do you want to just keep getting hit in the face? Which one do you want? Pick your poison here, folks. Which shit sandwich do you want to eat? The shit sandwich of responsibility for something that you think is not your fault or the shit sandwich of getting hit in the face over and over again. I talked about your favorite flavor of shit sandwich in episode 1663. There are no perfect outcomes in life. If anybody told you that there were some perfect outcomes you could get in life, they were lying to you. There is no such thing as a perfect outcome in life. There are only trade-offs. I talked about that recently in episode 2174. Your decision is what trade-offs are you willing to make? Every situation in life, there are trade-offs. Everything you do in life, there's a trade-off that you have to make. Listen to episode 2174 so you can understand it. Many people are, have been trying really hard to sell all of us on this concept of everything just being perfect. All we have to do is this and eliminate this and stop doing this and accept that and everything's gonna be perfect and exactly as it needs to be. This is not true. Anyone who's telling you that if all we do is this, this, and this and everything's gonna be right, they're lying to you. Or if they're telling you we gotta do these things but they're leaving out the other side of it, they're not telling you the whole story, all right, you should not trust that person. You should severely trust anyone who only tells you the good parts of what they're gonna do but they don't tell you the trade-offs that come with it because there's a trade-off with everything you name a situation in life for which there is no trade-off i'm gonna name a situation in life for which you don't have all the information everybody following me so far i'm gonna say that again name a situation in life for which there is no trade-off and i will name a situation in life for which you don't have all the information Everybody following me so far? Okay. This is one of the hardest messages for people to swallow simply because it's putting all the onus on you. Because in today's world, we are teaching and conditioning people to be soft, weak victims and to blame anyone or anything other than themselves for their own situations or put responsibility on. Again, use whatever language you want. Blame, responsibility, ownership, all different sides of the same coin. We are teaching people to put the responsibility for their situation, the blame, the ownership of any situation on anything other than themselves. Here's the thing that you need to understand. I told you about this. Earl Nightingale said it. If you want to be different than most people, do the opposite of what most people do. Most people try to find anything other than themselves to blame for every situation that they're in. The high achievers in life, for which there's a very small percentage, I told you about this, when I mentioned Earl Nightingale, 5% of people became successful by the time they got to retirement age when he was judging them by finances. Why is this? Because most people conform. So if you want to be part of that 5% who reach success in life, what you need to do is the opposite of what everybody else does. Since everybody else is absolving themselves of responsibility, you need to take as much responsibility as possible for every situation you come across in your life. That's how you become successful. Take as much responsibility as you possibly can. Any questions so far? As much responsibility as you possibly can. So you're doing the opposite of everybody else. Any situation you get in in life, even if you don't know how you got there, take responsibility for it because now you can do something. Even if it's not your fault, take responsibility. The reason why you're responsible because you're the one who will then have the power to do something. Remember that power and responsibility are a package deal. You want one, you get the other. When life hits you in the face, even if you didn't do anything to provoke life to hit you in the face, you're still the person who got hit in the face, true or not. Which means now you got to do something about the fact you got hit in the face, which requires you taking ownership of the situation. Even if you don't want ownership, you must assume ownership. This is the game that we're in. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is what to do when life hits you in the face. 
Uh, move your head and keep your damn hands up. All right, now we just take this one from combat sports. Now we're getting literal here. When you get hit in the face, move your head and keep your damn hands up. What does that mean? Any of you who's ever watched or been in or practice a combat sport, you know that's the way it works. You don't want to get hit in the face when you're boxing. You got to learn how to move your head a lot. You don't want to become a, a, a stationary target and keep your hands up. So if someone throws a punch at your face, your hands are up, you can block their punch before it gets to your, your nose or your eye or your mouth. That's what a boxing trainer would tell you when you get hit in the face. You're not moving your head enough. You don't have your hands up. That's why you got hit in the face. And this and other things that we're going to get to. You know the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. If and when a situation of life hits you in the face, the first thing you must do is take responsibility for that situation. The next thing you must do is ask yourself what allowed life to get a clean shot at your face the way that it just did. So first of all, you take responsibility for the situation. All right, I just got hit in the face. I did something to get hit in the face. The next thing is, uh, how did life get a clean shot of my face? Am I not moving my head often enough? Am I not keeping my hands up? Because that's the only way you can get hit in the face in a boxing match is either your hands are down or your head is not moving or a combination of both. That's the only way you get hit in the face. Your hands are up and you're moving your head. You're probably not going to get hit in the face too much. You got caught doing one. You got caught making a mistake and your opponent was waiting for that opportunity. They found it. They got you. So this is the next thing that you got to do. The next thing you do is make sure you don't get hit in the face again, which means don't do the same thing that led you getting hit in the face the last time. If you keep getting screwed over on business deals, ask yourself the question, what role am I playing in that situation? I keep getting screwed over on business deals. What am I doing to cause myself to keep getting screwed over? I mean, isn't that a good question? It's a really good question to ask that puts the ownership on you. The challenge for many people is they do not have the internal fortitude to take this kind of ownership. Therefore, they will never ask themselves the question because they're like, oh, well, what does that mean? I got to blame myself for the situation. Yes, motherfucker. Yes, that's the whole point. That's the very reason why I'm telling you to do this. That's how you take ownership is by taking responsibility. And that's how you get power. This is the reason why so many people want power, but they don't have it because they're not willing to do what it requires what power requires is ownership and responsibility. Most people want power, but they don't want the ownership and responsibility. So while they try and try and try and get power, they keep failing because they're not willing to take the one step that it requires. If you keep dating the wrong type of guy or the wrong kind of girl, what are you doing to attract these individuals into your life? If you keep dating guys who are, who are assholes or girls who are uh, fast and they're not you know, long-term type of people, what are you doing that is attracting these people and making them come around you? Because are there other people you know who are not attracting these same type of women or men? Yes, okay, so clearly they're doing something that's attracting the kind of people that you want but that you're failing to bring around you. What are you doing? What are you, how are you presenting yourself that's attracting a certain type of person into your life that you don't want in your life? If you find yourself in the same unwanted situation over and over again, habitually, that's something that you are doing that is creating the circumstances that lead to this repeated situation. Once you take ownership of it, then you can find out why this is happening and then you can make your needed adjustments. But many people never get to that point because they don't take ownership. They want to blame something and someone else. And when somebody like me comes along and says what I'm saying right now, listen, some people are listening to me right now. Some people have turned the show off and decided they're never going to listen to anything I say ever again because of what I just said over the last four minutes. Because I just said, any situation that's happening in your life that you don't want, you're responsible for it. A lot of people don't want to hear that. A lot of people don't like that. Because taking responsibility for their situation, even when it's not, quote unquote, their fault, they just, they just can't wrap their mind around that. The problem with that is, the problem with that habit is that these people will never, they will never ascend to a power position in their own lives. They will always be a victim of their own life. And it's a tragedy because they're going to live their whole lives like this. Not because they didn't know, simply because they didn't have the, the mental toughness to take it. But hey, I can only help the people who want to be held. I can only preach to the choir. Let's move on to point number three. Today's topic, once again, is what to do when life hits you in the face. Number three, learn to throw a counterpunch. And if you've ever been in a, a combat sport or watched a combat sport, that's the way it works. You get hit, move your head. Put your hands up so you can't get hit again, and then you throw a counter punch. The most vulnerable moment for anybody in a combat sport is the moment when you throw a punch because you've committed, and now you're open to getting hit back. This is the most dangerous position to be in in any fighting sport, 
is the moment when you have just thrown a punch, even if you land your punch, because now your opponent can hit you back because you're open right now. Your hands are extended. Your face is open on at least one side. You can get hit. The most dangerous position to be in in fighting is when you just throw that punch because now they can hit you back. That's what we call the counter punch. So when life hits you in the face, don't just stand there holding your face and crying about the fact that you got hit. Look for the opportunity in the situation. Understand that every situation in life contains an opportunity. Every situation in life contains an Every action must have an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, this is just a law of the, the balance of the universe. The beautiful thing about life is that we have that yin and yang. Every positive situation has a challenge in it. Every challenging situation has a positive in it. Your job is to identify the opportunity within your situation, even if the situation is not so great. The mindset I use for this is called digging for diamonds. Napoleon Hill talked about this in one of his lectures. So let's say you went on away for a week long vacation. You came back home from your vacation. You driving up your street and you notice that your entire house was burned down to the ground. All you see is fire trucks and a pile of rubble that used to be your house. Now, while you're looking at that pile of rubber, rubble, you remember that you had some very expensive and very valuable diamond jewelry in one of your dresser drawers of your home that home that's now burned down, but you know that that diamond jewelry was worth more than the value of your home itself. Those jewels alone, again, can put you back on your feet real quick, because they're, again, they're worth more than the house that just burned down. I mean, it's, you got insurance and all that, but you get the point. What would you do? What would you do? You pulled up to your house, the house burned down, you're in shock, everything's gone, but you realize that diamond jewelry is in that pile somewhere. What would you do? I know what I would do. I'll grab a shovel and start digging. I'm gonna get those diamonds. I don't give a damn what the fireman says. Get the hell out of my way, that's my house. This is my land. Get the hell out of my way, I'm gonna get those diamonds. This is what you need to do when life hits you in the face. Start digging for diamonds. All right, they are there, but you gotta be willing to dig. You gotta be willing to dig to find the opportunity within the situation, the equal and opposite reaction to the action that just happened to you. The challenge for many people is they are standing there holding their face and crying about the fact that they got hit or mad at the fact that somebody like me said to them, hey, uh, yeah, I know you just got hit in the face, but what did you do to cause yourself to get hit in the face? They don't really want to hear it at that moment. The problem is many people don't want to hear it at all, ever. There's no moment in which they're open to hearing that kind of conversation. Or if it is, it takes them 30 days to finally get around to being willing to hear it. Whereas your opposition, your competition, the people that you're racing to get rewards and success in life, all right, it took them 30 seconds to get around and wanting to hear that conversation. So by the time you finally show up, and you know, put your balls back on and get some mental fortitude and some toughness, this is males and females, get some mental fortitude and some toughness to deal with the situation and go get some opportunity for yourself. The person who only needed 30 seconds, they already took all the opportunity off the table. There's nothing left for you. All right, you, want, you wanted to get some food, but everybody already took all the food off the table. So uh, you better eat some, some sleep. All right, you're not getting anything because you waited too long to uh, build your, get your mental toughness back. This is why you gotta do it now. In times of war, prepare for peace. In times of peace, prepare for war. That's Sun Tzu. This is what you do when life hits you in the face. Let's recap today's class, which is what to do when life hits you in the face. Again, when you're in a combat sport and the other fighter hits you, you don't complain or cry bloody murder or call the cops. I mean, you know that's the game that you signed up for. Well, guess what? Life is the same way. When you get into the game of life, you are signing up to get hit in the face. This is the way that it works. Life will hit you in the face many times over. What do you do? Number one. When life hits you in the face, first of all, figure out why it happened and what your role was in allowing it to happen. This is the hardest thing for people to, to accept, especially in today's world where we're teaching people to be soft, weak, and to be victims, to blame anyone other than themselves for their own situation. So I'm asking you to do the opposite. Any situation you're in, be responsible for it, even if it's not your fault. The reason why you're responsible because you're the one who then has the power to do something about it. Power and responsibility are a package deal, folks. If you want power, you must take responsibility for your own life. Number two, move your head and keep your damn hands up. That's what a boxing trainer would tell you when you get hit in the face in addition to some other things. Definition of insanity, doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So when life hits you in the face, take ownership of it. Then ask yourself, how did life get a clean shot in my face? Or right, something I did that allowed life to get a clean shot in my face. If you keep getting screwed over on business deals, you keep dating the wrong guy or girl, what are you doing that is attracting the situation? Why is this becoming a habit in your life? There is something you are doing that is allowing this situation, doing or not doing. Once you take ownership of that, then you can find out why, then you can do something about it and make your adjustments. And number three, learn to throw a counterpunch. The most dangerous position to be in fighting is 
in a moment when you've just thrown a punch, even if you land a punch, because now you can be hit back, you can be countered. Look at somebody like Floyd Mayweather. He was a great counter puncher. James Tony, great counter puncher. They wait for you to throw a punch, and that's when they get you. You pay every time you throw a punch to the point that you don't even want to throw a punch against them because you know you're going to take punishment every single time. So when life hits you in the face, don't just stand there crying about the fact that you got hit in the face. Look for the opportunity within the situation. Every positive situation also has a challenge within it. Your job is to identify that, that situation, that opportunity, and do something with it. Every positive situation has a challenge. Every challenge has a positive situation. It, just like the digging for diamonds idea. You had some diamond jewelry and you're now burned down house. You see that pile of rubble. You're going to grab a shovel and you're going to find those diamonds because you know what those diamonds are worth. It's the same thing when you face the challenge in life. Grab a shovel and start finding the opportunity because it is there waiting for somebody to grab it. The question is, who's it going to be? All that said, text me to get my daily motivation. My number is 305-384-6894. And go to workonyourgameuniversity.com to join my coaching programs, one-on-one -on -one group programs at Work On Your Game University so we can get strategic about what you're doing. Make sure you're operating off accurate formulas, not just banging your head against the wall with effort and hoping that it works out. If you have an inaccurate formula that you're operating off of, you could do all the right things and still fail. That's why you need a strategist around. I'm going to be that guy for you. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre all day.